Hi, Helen. Thank you so much for joining us today to talk about your career and how you've used your languages. Nice to be talking to you. You've had a fascinating career in the sporting world, notably the International Tennis Federation. I particularly wanted to highlight this industry as an interesting area for students to consider if they're wanting to use their languages after they graduate. Um, so to start off, it would be great to hear about your career since you graduated and the criteria that you were looking for in your career when you first started job hunting. So when I graduated, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I just knew that I wanted to use my languages and travel and work in an international environment. I didn't really know how I would be able to, to do that. Um, and so I end, I've ended up actually working for most of my career in international sport, just purely by chance. Um, so what I wanted to do by talking to you is really just um, let language students and language graduates know that they're, they're, this is an area that they could potentially use a language in if they want to travel they can do that in this industry because it's one that um that people probably don't realize exists or realizes is a good way to use languages so i've been working in sport for um as i say almost my whole career now yeah, 16 years uh, and i've started off working uh, i've worked for the international tennis federation for all of that time uh, started off working in the over 35s event, so um, age category between over 35 and over 85, organising their world championships. I moved on to work in the juniors and pro circuits departments. I was managing um, circuits of over 1,000 tournaments in about 140 countries. And I'm currently working as the project manager for the Billie Jean King Cup, which is the Women's World Cup of Tennis. So a very, a very um, interesting career using languages, traveling a lot that I just wanted to let other people know existed really. Brilliant. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting and great to give an insight into this area that students wouldn't necessarily um, have thought about. And I know you've worked your way up at the International Tennis Federation. What do you enjoy about the environment? Um, it's just very international. I mean, as I said, when I was, when I was managing the juniors and pro circuits, we worked with uh, tournaments in, in about 140 countries. So you're just constantly talking to people from all over the world. You can, whatever language you speak, you can use it in, in that environment. Um, and I think that's something that's quite general in a lot of sports because most of sport is pretty globalized. And although tennis is, is particularly um, widespread around the world, I think all, all sports have a, have a big international element in them. So, so that's something that no matter what sport you worked in, you probably would um, have that international language side of things. And also a lot of travel. I travel, I've traveled quite a lot with, with this job over the years, which is something I know a lot of language uh, graduates like to do. Absolutely. And if a student was looking to get into this industry, apart from having language skills, what sort of experience would they need to have? If you're looking at working on the sporting events side, um, I think one big thing is, is volunteering at events, um, ideally sporting events, but any, any kind of events really, um, and just being or becoming the kind of person that can really um, turn their hand to any task, whatever needs to be done, just, just doing it. So rather than any specific um, you know, internships or, or anything really formal, it, it is just a case of getting a bit of hands-on experience. Um, and then there's also the fact that if you work on events, the, the event itself um, might look very glamorous when you're on site, but most of the work on events is done in an office. So any kind of admin um, office based experience, you know, learning how to, to organize your time and, and having good attention to detail, all of that kind of thing that you can get in, in any kind of office job is also beneficial. Um, anything else to add before we finish up today? Um, I suppose um, just just to sort of highlight some of the things that you could probably even you talked a bit about um, experience that you might need to have to get into this industry, but I think even even skills that you gain from doing a degree, um, it's, that's not necessarily going to be enough on its on its own. But you know, being able to um, manage your time effectively, um, as I said, a good attention to detail, just being the kind of person that when someone asks you to do something, you you can be trusted to to do it, deliver it on time and to a good standard, all, all those kind of things. And people doing a degree at Cambridge will certainly know how to do. Um, so it's it's something that um, people shouldn't be put off by thinking that there's going to be a sort of, a, it's going to be hard to get into because it, it's it's not, it's, it's hard in the sense that lots of people would like to do it. Um, but I would say enthusiasm is, is probably um, a, a big, uh, big thing in terms of getting started and, and just using skills that 
what people will, will have anyway. Absolutely. Um, and you obviously work within tennis, but you had said before that this could be applied across different types of sports. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and not I've worked within a, a world governing body for my career, but there are a lot of jobs in sport that are um, that are contract based where people will go from event to event. And that's definitely a, a viable career path, especially for someone starting out who doesn't necessarily have a lot of um, financial commitments, let's say, to, to, to go from working on a contract from one event to the next um, could be a very interesting way to start your career. Helen, and to give you some insight into the world of sports and career in, in your language, it's really useful. Thank you. Thank you.